In this video, we're going to focus on three more really special log properties. Uh, the first is called a product property. The product property. There we go. Product property is stated like such. Log of any base of two numbers being multiplied can be rewritten as a sum of logs. And it is written like this. Log of the same base with the first number added to log of the same base with the second number. So we basically just break up this product and create a sum. So here's an example of what that might look like. If I have log base 5 of 21, how can I rewrite this using my sum of logs or using my product property? First thing you have to do is create a product out of this number. You have to think what two numbers multiply to give you 21. Hopefully you came up with 7 times 3. So now that we have a product, we can rewrite it as the sum of two logs. We have log base 5 of 7 plus log base 5 of 3. So there we go. We just rewrote that as a sum of logs. Or in other words, we used our product property to simplify that expression. All right, so that's the product property. The second one is called the quotient property. And the quotient property is written like this. The log of any base of a quotient or a division dividing two things. These could be numbers or they could be expressions and we'll see some complicated things in a moment here. Uh, but we can rewrite that as what's called a difference of logs. And it's real similar to what we just did. We break it up into log of the same base with the first or top or numerator um, number or value and we use a difference or a subtraction symbol and we have log of the same base of our bottom number or our denominator value and so there is our difference of logs or our quotient property here's an example let's say that we have a log base 5 of this quotient 3 divided by 7 Sometimes there'll be parentheses here, other times they won't be there. It's still a quotient though. So rewrite that as a difference of logs or use the quotient property to simplify this log. So we just basically break it up. Log base 5 with the numerator value minus log base 5 with the denominator value. And there's our difference of logs. All right, one more. The next one is called the power property or exponent property. And it says that log of any base of a number to an exponent or power can be rewritten and it looks like this we take that exponent and we just put it on the front and then we rewrite everything that was already there so that one's pretty easy all you do is take that exponent value tag it onto the front instead and now you've used your power property to rewrite this expression for example if we have log base so let's say 5 of 49. Now one thing you might say is, well, I could use my product property. And you can go ahead and do that. And in fact, I'm going to do that second just to show you that it really doesn't matter. 
but since we're talking about the power property, let's practice that. So let's write this using our exponents. So if I have log base 5 of 7 squared, that's the same, right? And now I can apply my power property. I'm going to take the exponent, and I'm just going to tag it onto the front there. So 2 is in front of log base 5 of 7. And I've just used my power property to simplify that expression. Now, like I said, if we decided that we wanted to use uh, the product property, we could rewrite this as log base 5 um, of 7 times 7, right? Okay, so now we can use our product property, and we would say log base 5 of 7 plus log base 5 of 7. And now we need to simplify. Since we have things that have the same term, we can combine like terms. How many log base 5s of 7s do we have? We got one there. And we also have one here. So if I combine my like terms, I end up getting two log base 5 of 7s. And we end up with the same exact number. So this is a little bit longer than just simply using the power property. But you end up getting the same exact answer. So now, challenge comes when we put them all together in one problem. Let's use all three of these properties to simplify a complex log expression. For example, if I have log base 2 of 7x cubed over y, or divided by y. And sometimes they'll be written like this, sometimes they'll help you out with parentheses there. But we got all three properties going on right now that we can use. The first is that we're going to use the quotient property. So if I use my quotient property, QP's quotient property, then I can break this up into log base 2 of 7x cubed minus log base 2 of y. We still have some more things going on here. We still have a power going on here and we also have a product going on here so we need to use both of those properties to break this up a little bit more I'm gonna use my product property next we'll call that PP product property I'm just gonna rewrite this first part of it so I got log base 2 of 7 plus log base 2 of x cubed and we still got this minus log base 2 of y attached at the end there. I still got one more thing going on. I still have this power of this exponent. So I can now use my uh, power property or my exponent property. I'm going to call that EP just to differentiate there. And we can finally write our uh, sum and difference of logs here. So we got log base 2 of 7 plus uh, move that 3 out to the front plus 3 times log base 2 of x minus log base 2 of y. And there is my final expression. So we took this log expression, this quotient log expression, and we rewrote it into what is called a sum and difference of logs here. Um, sometimes you might see instructions that say uh, simplify the following and make sure to write all exponents um, as as a sum or difference of logs. And so what they're saying is don't don't leave any of these behind. Um, use that exponent property to get it all the way down. All right, let's do one more here, big long one. If I have log base a of x to the fourth, and then the cube root of z, that is a cube root right there, over or divided by y squared. How can I write this as a sum and difference of logs? And making sure to get rid of all of my exponents. The first property we're going to want to use hopefully is the most obvious. We want to get rid of that quotient using our quotient property. 
So we'd write log base a of x to the fourth uh, cube root of z minus log base a of y squared. Okay, now the next thing you might want to do is get rid of your radicals. Uh, since we know that we want to use exponents to use that power property or exponent property, well, let's rewrite our radicals as exponents. Um, so we're going to do exponent form here. Make sure everything is in exponent form. So we're just rewriting log base a of x to the fourth. And a cube root can be written as a fraction of one third. Still got log base a of y squared. And now we can use uh, either the product property or the power property. I'm going to go with the product property first. Just seems to make more sense. So I write log base a of x to the fourth plus log base a of z to the one third. And we still have that log base a of y squared out there. Now, finally, we can do one more property to simplify. Let's use our exponent property or power property here. The EP. So we take our exponent, we put it on the front. So now we have 4 log base a of x plus, stick this exponent on the front, 1 third log base a of z. And this last one, take that power and put it on the front there. So 2 log base a of y. So there's our final sum and difference of logs there. So these are kind of like puzzles. You just got to unwrap them. Choose the property that you want to use to kind of get rid of some things here. Undo the products, undo the quotients, write all your radicals as exponents, um, and then get rid of those exponents and use that exponent property there. All right, let's do one more. This time, let's use a natural log just to change things up. So, for example, if I have the natural log of e squared over 5, how can I rewrite that as a sum or difference of logs? First thing we're going to do is um, kind of visualize the natural log uh, using its base, we know that a natural log has a base e. So this is really what we should be visualizing. And that might help. Um, so that we know we have a quotient here with log base e. Or natural log, right? So the natural log of e squared minus, I'm using my quotient property, um, the natural log of 5. And we got to think back to our uh, natural log properties. I know that if I have the natural log of e, those are inverses of each other. They end up canceling each other, and I'm just left with that exponent. Remember, you could visualize it if you want. Just like this. These e's are inverses. They're going to cancel, and we're left with that too. And this doesn't do anything. It just has to be left in that form. So we end up getting 2 minus the natural log of 5. All right, so there uh, was kind of a quick introduction there to quotient property, uh, product property, and power property of logs, and a little bit of review of natural logs there. So good luck using those properties to write sums and differences of logs, just changing the form, um, and really get rid of all your exponents there. Just use those powers, products, and quotient properties and write sums and differences. Good luck.